Congratulations on your new backbone. The backbone rack system is a modular system that can both grow and change with you as your needs change. This install process is pretty in depth, so we suggest that you clear out some time and if you have a friend that can help you, it'll just make things a lot easier. The first step is to identify your configuration. This install is going to cover the load back with a skull screen which is the most comprehensive package that we offer. But the install process is generally the same across all configurations. Once you've identified your configuration, you'll want to move to step two, which is inventorying your parts. To do that, you're going to check your parts and your hardware against the list provided in your instructions. Some trucks are going to require blind fasteners for mounting the ribs, just because of the design of the truck bed itself. If your truck happens to fall into this category, blind fasteners are going to be included in your hardware kit. Otherwise, the standard hardware mounting kit and procedures will apply. Let's move on now to step three, which is installing the ribs. Your ribs are going to come pre-cut from the factory. However, if for some reason you do need to shorten them, they can be cut with either a chop saw or a hacksaw. Make sure to allow for a one and a half inch space between the end of the rib closest to the cab and the cab itself. This is going to allow room for the cuffs to be installed later. The installation and leveling process for the ribs is essentially the same across all configurations. The only difference is that shorter ribs require less fasteners. The ribs themselves are made up of a two-piece mating extrusion with a top and a bottom. You'll need to separate the upper and lower sections by either pulling or sliding them apart. When you've got the ribs separated, then take the lower section of the rib and place it onto the bed rail of the truck. Then make sure that the rib is flush to the inside of the truck's bed rail and that the tapered end is toward the tailgate. Before continuing, use an angle finder or a level and check to see if the rib is level. If not, the rib is going to need to be shimmed, which will be covered later in the video. Don't skip ahead just yet because you're going to want to watch the next section on drilling first. Also, it won't hurt to go ahead and double check now that you've left that one and a half inch gap between the ribs and the front of the cab. Here's a little close up of the cab into the lower rib. And notice that recessed void. Now take a look at the overload pin on the underside of the handcuff. This is important because later in the install, this pin is actually going to insert into the void in the lower rib. It's this overload pin on the handcuff itself that is the reason why the ribs need to be backed off slightly from the cab. For smaller trucks with really skinny bed rails, it's actually fine to move the ribs inward slightly towards the inside of the bed. This is going to make sure that when you drill along our rib line in the lower rib that you actually hit the bed rail instead of hitting nothing. Once you get the lower rib properly placed, go ahead and clamp it down. For ribs that go all the way down the length of the truck's bed rails, you're going to want to mark four evenly spaced drill points. Those drill points should be marked along the rib line extrusion and roughly 12 inches from either end of the rib. Be careful that you don't mark your drill points over voids or inaccessible spots like the stake pockets. Here's another tip. The installation process for the baby back ribs is the same as the longer ribs. However, it only requires drilling two holes per side. Next, with the ribs securely clamped to the truck's bed rail, use a 13 32nd drill bit and drill the four holes through the rib and the truck rail on your designated marks. This section is for those trucks whose bed design make it impossible to install the ribs via traditional nut and bolt. If your truck falls into this category, then you'll want to use blind fasteners. Using a fluted or step drill bit, bore out your initial holes until they are just large enough to insert the blind fastener. Then insert the blind fastener, metal in first, pull up firmly, and slide the keeper ring down. Then move the plastic legs from side to side until they break off, leaving the fastener in place. If your ribs are already level, then you're not going to need shims, so you can go ahead and skip now to section 3D. Your install kit included an assortment of aluminum shims. 
The ribs need to be level for your backbone to work properly. The shims are placed on top of the truck's bed rail underneath the lower rib. They can be stacked, rotated, and maneuvered to level the rib. A simple trial and error approach is best here, choosing and arranging the shims and then rechecking it until the rib is level. You're now ready to finalize your rib installation. Now take the lower rib, flip it over to the bottom side, and apply the foam strip to the outer edge. Apply a small section of foam to the underside of the tailgate into the rib and then trim it to length. Then place the lower rib back on top of the truck bed. Take a long socket head, thread on a split lock washer, apply a little bit of Loctite to the threads and insert it into the hole. If there's not enough clearance for the fender washer to fit, it can either be bent or ground off on one side. Repeat this process for all the holes and then torque them down slowly and evenly. This is going to compress the neoprene until the lower rib is actually level. Now go ahead and install the upper rib and to make triple sure, let's go ahead and check the level one more time. The configuration you purchased will determine how many knuckles you have. It's your choice where you want them, but just remember that each knuckle requires a dually T-nut loaded into the corresponding T-track. If you want any knuckles in the ribs, add the desired amount of T-nuts into the T-slot now. If you purchased a V-back, add two more dually T-nuts into the track now. Now secure your tailbone using a dually T-nut and a taperhead screw. Step four is assembling and installing a rib cage and a skull screen. Slide the top bone over the keys on the upper section of the skull screen. Then insert two dually T-nuts into the track in the top bone and add T-nuts according to the numbers of knuckles that you'd like. Insert the vibration dampeners into the corresponding voids on either side of the top bone and tap them until they're snug using a mallet and the wooden dowel provided. Slide the shoulder socket onto the top bone. The keyway in the extrusion allows it to only go on one way, so you can't do it wrong. Now slide the other shoulder socket onto the opposite side of the top bone. Locate one of the arms and insert two dually T-nuts into the track. Again, add more dually T-nuts here based on the number of knuckle tie-downs that you intend to mount on the arms. Slide the arm over the side key on the skull screen and up into the shoulder socket's lower void. Repeat this on the opposite side. Here's a tip. Thread a taper screw into each of the dually T-nuts closest to the shoulder sockets to prevent them from sliding behind the shoulder sockets and out of reach. Flip the assembly over as a unit. Place a third vibration dampener into the void on the arm, and using the wooden dowel provided, tap it into place until it's snug. Repeat this step on the opposite arm. Then locate a handcuff, and you'll notice that that too has been keyed, so that it can only go on one way. Slide the handcuff onto the corresponding lower arm. Then locate the crossbone, and slide two dually T-nuts into the channel. If you'd like to mount any knuckles here, Add the corresponding amount of T-nuts. Then flip the crossbone so that the thin channel is facing up and slide it into place between the handcuffs. The channel in the crossbone will naturally cup over the bottom of the skull screen. Now flip the entire assembly onto the opposite side and check to make sure that the crossbone is flush with the edge of the inside inner wall of the handcuff. Now remove the taper heads, slide the T-nuts into their proper position, and re-thread the taper heads into them. Repeat this process around all corners of the rib cage to secure the assembly and tighten everything lightly with the skinny Allen wrench provided. Now measure the length at the bottom inside edge of the rib cage and compare that to the distance between the two ribs mounted on the truck. These numbers should match.
If any adjustments are necessary, loosen the taper head bolts and tap the assembly with a rubber mallet. Then lift the entire rib cage assembly into the bed of the truck and place it carefully onto the ribs. The handcuffs should be sitting roughly an inch or so over the ribs toward the cab. This is going to allow for that overload pin that we talked about earlier to be aligned and engaged. Now take your rubber mallet and then gently pound that handcuff into place which is going to engage the overload pin. Once all the final adjustments are made it's time to actually lock the rack into place. This is going to be done by backing out each taper head, applying some Loctite, and then retorquing it. Okay, we're actually on the home stretch here. We're at step five, which is assembling and installing the VBAC. You're going to want to lay out your parts in a clean space. Locate one of the two legs, which are the shorter oval-shaped links, and insert two dually T-nuts into the T-slot. Now go ahead and insert the leg into the ankle cuff. Locate the hip bone and insert two duallys and any extra dually T-nuts that you're going to want here for knuckles. Then slide the hip socket over the upper portion of the leg and repeat this process with the opposite hip socket. And don't worry, the hip sockets are keyed so you can't install them backwards. Go ahead and thread in all the taper heads. The bolts need to be tight enough to hold the assembly together but loose enough to make any further adjustments later. Lift the entire V-back assembly onto the back of the truck, lower it down very carefully onto the ribs. The V-back can be lifted and it can be repositioned anywhere along the ribs. You'll now want to make any adjustments necessary. For carrying longer loads, the V-back can also be rotated 180 degrees so that it actually leans away from the cab and that creates a longer loading platform. When you've got the V-back in the position that you want it, you're now going to want to lock it down to the ribs. So if you don't have dually T-nuts in there yet to do that, now would be the time to go ahead and load them in. When the V-back is moved, it's important to remember that you're going to need to reapply the Loctite to avoid having that hardware loosen up somewhere down the road. Okay, we're at the final step, finalizing this install. We're now at the point where we get to install our knuckle tie-downs. And this is where all the T-nuts that you preloaded are going to come into play. Knuckles can be mounted basically at any point on the rack that has a T-slot, including the arms, legs, ribs, crossbone, etc. Knuckles can also be rotated 90 degrees to accommodate various tie-down methods or preferences. Because the knuckles are what's actually holding your load, you're going to want to reapply Loctite and retorque them whenever they're moved. A lot of our customers like to use aftermarket accessories on their racks, like light bars. And for this reason, we offer quick-turn T-nuts that can be loaded into the T-slot in the rack basically at any point without having to disassemble your entire rack. If you purchase a skull screen and you find at some point that it's rattling, it's possible that it's not completely bottomed out in the crossbone. Here we're going to show you how you can use a silicone bead along the bottom of the crossbone and the skull screen itself to take care of that problem. Congratulations, you've now completed your backbone install. Feel free to contact us directly if you have any questions.